I am once again asking for your financial support. If you enjoy the stuff that I make, please consider being a patron of my Patreon page. Patreon.com backslash Neil P. Neil P. Thanks in advance. Love you, love you. Okay, we're doing it. Hey, okay, let me do my intro real quick. Dude, it like I just went on a like a four mile walk and then ate food, but for some reason I can't stop sweating because it's like ni- <laughs> it's ninety degrees up here. Okay, real quick, uh hey, this is Neil Patterson. I'm a dude and I'm here once again for the podcast Subcast, which is the podcast that started in my van in the year twenty nineteen. What's up cast? As in subcast, as in what's up cast. And uh I'm here. I just got back from tour and I'm here with my new friend who I met on the clock app. And because of the band Psycho Stick, I'm, I'm here with Sam of the band Flagman, who is a flag boy, and Sam is going to tell us about the band Flagman and the clock app, and we're going to have a conversation. So here is Sam. Hello, Sam. Hi. Hello, hello. We're Thanks live. for having me. We're live. Thanks for we're being live. Thanks for being on Subcast. Hi. Of course. Of course. So, yes, we Florida. Met, you're a Florida clock. man. Florida human. Yes, indeed. I, I am a Florida man. Um, all the flag boys are Florida men. Uh, it's uh, everything that you've heard is true. What's it like? And, and, and worse probably actually I'm, act, I'm kind of a surrogate Florida man. I'm not, I'm technically an Oklahoma man. Okay. Then, like three eleven, uh, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> Amber is the color of my energy, but, what? uh, I ended up in Florida and, uh, you know, been in the swamp for a long time now. What uh, city did you originate in? Wait, did, did you say Oklahoma or Nebraska? Oklahoma. Okay, I mean, it's so all the that, same thing. So, no, so Oklahoma has nothing to do with 311. Oklahoma is the Okies. I, it's all the flat in, you know, Midwest, kind of. I was ready to I go with up. it. I fucked no, up. I was 311 from Oklahoma. I heard O first. and I was like, because Omaha, Omaha Styley, that's 311, the Omaha, that's, Nebraska. That's them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, uh, Where was it? Some little nothing town. I just tell people Oklahoma City because that's like the one city. Um, but to truth be told, I don't know. I was born on some army base somewhere in the, the, the flat nothingness that is for, or not Florida, but Oklahoma, but they're kind of similar, actually very, very flat, but there's no Buffalo in Florida. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, there's a, they call it tornado alley in, uh, mm-hmm. in Oklahoma. And also for, for some reason, I don't know if it's for religious reasons, but the beer is like 3.2% alcohol. Really? Yeah, I've spent a lot of time in Oklahoma with like weird crust punks. I we saw ghosts in Oklahoma. We stayed at an anarchist commune in Norman, Norman, the college town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Oki, Oki. I have an I have an uncle in Norman. Hello, uncle. Yeah. So Sam, for Sam, who is a flag. So this is the thing: the band's flag man. Yes. But but y'all are flag boys. How does that yes. work? Explain that. So it's like it's like a big mech. You know what I mean? Individually, we're flag boys. Together, we're flag man. Our powers combined <laughs> create flag man. Because a lot of time people will be like flag men. And it's like, no, no, no. Flag man is the unit individually. You know, we're the flag boys. So, Interesting. you know, it's kind of like somebody said it was maybe like Power Rangers or uh, what's the other one? Uh, Voltron. The robots that connect. Voltron. Yeah, that's it. Voltron. Yeah, because I'm old. Right. It's the 80s thing. Before yeah, Power Rangers, there was Voltron, and it was essentially the same idea. It's a bunch of different mechs that form right. a giant robot type thing, and that's that's us, really. <laughs> okay, so the boys become man. Mm-hmm. I we like all that. become one man. I like it. Um, yeah. yeah. So you I, okay? Your email says 1996. Were you born in 96? Indeed, I was. Okay, so you're a baby. Yes, I am. But that makes you how many years old? I'm a I'm a wee lad. I will be 26 in September, so that makes me 25. Okay, cool. Because I was telling my girlfriend, I was like, check out this band, Flagman, and she's like, that band's really cool. Y'all should play with them. And I'm like, yeah. If it were the two, because I started my band Downtown Brown in the 2000s, like your band and our band would be touring together in the 2000s. Just it, we got to make it happen. Well, we still can potentially. It, it's going to happen. But but my friends in Psycho Stick uh, shared the Bumblebee clip, the, the the viral 
TikTok thing. Now, my my question to you is: before that clip, wh- like, what was what was the kind of like the climate for for Flagman? Did, did did that like kind of set it off for y'all? Yeah, honestly, like we've been we've been a band for about seven years. We started the guitar player and I started like summer of 2015, um, and we jammed for a long time. Uh, went through a bunch of different drummers, um, and we we only played like one or two shows without Grant, our current drummer. Um, but the music was completely different. We actually had uh, an EP and a record out that we just took. We just took them down <laughs> because as yeah. as time was going on, like our sound was just totally different. And um, because it was the oldest thing, it was the first thing that showed up when people searched for us. So we were like, yeah, this isn't this isn't right. So we took all that stuff down. But I mean, we've been kind of putzing around in Florida and playing regionally for a while. But yeah, never really got any kind of uh, attention online until the clock app came along. We had some friends that like really encouraged me to get on it. And I was I kind of spent like a year doing nothing on there, just like watching videos. It was all like. Yeah, it's like watching like, you know, people dance and stuff and like celebrities. And I'm like, How does, this doesn't seem like it would translate very well. Like, you know, weird, like metal with goofy bass lines. I'm like, how is is there a market for people that like this on TikTok? Um, and then once we started making those videos, we started to get, you know, the ball rolling. And I was like, oh, wait, like we actually before that, we had a, a just a random video I made one day before I went to work just me being like, Hey, if you like, you know, these bands, it was like Primus and Mr. Bungle and stuff like you might like my band. And I almost took it down. I was, cause it was so low effort. I was like, man, I really need to step up <laughs> my game. And right. I woke up the next day and I had like a quarter of a million views. I was like, I, I really don't understand how any of this works, but people like it. So. Yeah. And but, uh, that's the weirdest part about the clock app is it seems like a lot of times the shit that you put no effort into is the shit that blows up. hundred uh, percent. Yeah, like I went on a rant about, you know, the, being in a band is not a viable business opportunity. And I went on a rant. I was just like, fucking do it anyway. And I was talking <laughs> about doing it till you die. Die doing it. And shit got like quarter million views. And it was just me. It was me yelling at my phone, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I've told a couple of different friends that, that the the biggest thing that I've found uh, like successful on TikTok is just telling people exactly what you want them to do, whether it's just, <laughs> you know, the starting the, the, it, like I end a lot of videos with it, the listen to Flagman thing. It's like a bit now, but it started out as just like, I mean, it still is, you know, just me begging people to listen to my band. But it's, it's almost a meme at this point where it's, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's your tagline. It's like, you know, Anthony Fantano has the internet's busiest music nerd and every one of your TikToks right. has listen to Flagman at the end. Yeah. Know? And now people come on to our videos and say it for me. So it's like, well, this is this is perfect. You know, it was it was intentional the whole time. But now really, it was just 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 asking people to do the thing that you want them to do because people want to get involved. You know, they just don't always know what to do. What's interesting is from a marketing standpoint, because I'm from the MySpace era. My band started in the early 2000s. So we were we were spamming people and doing like friend adders and like we were on warp tour in the 2000s and all this shit but what's interesting is is seeing um it, it it's kind of like it's like backwards marketing these days it like even though you are telling people listen to flagman it's like you're kind of like doing it tongue in cheek it's kind of a joke in a way you know what i mean yeah. it, it it doesn't seem Definitely. It, like when i watch y'all's content it doesn't seem desperate you're you're it seems <laughs> it seems like very approachable like it, it i don't know they, like it's just the, the climate is so different these days because what you, you're trying to essentially like entertain people and then trick them at the end of the entertaining little clip to to do the thing but not even by necessarily saying it you're not saying i don't know y'all do it really well as all, as all oh, i'm trying to say i don't know what i'm i don't know what i'm getting at um but i'm i'm taking pages out of your book because what what it seems like like what's working for me on TikTok is me being like really personal and telling people how I used to shit the bed and how I'm an alcoholic and how, you know, being in a band is like this. But I, I haven't really crossed over into that listener downtown Brown thing yet. And <laughs> so I'm, I'm taking notes. Yeah, man. It, it, I appreciate that. First of all, that means a lot. It's been, like I said, I spent a long time just kind of, uh, 
just fucking around with TikTok and trying to see what works and and what people like. Um, and I, I don't know. I think it, it comes from like a wider thing for our band is like being a, a heavier band. Um, and, and in general, you run into a lot of this in the music scene, but like we noticed as we first started playing shows that there was a lot of bands take themselves really, really, really seriously. That's the thing. And they're not like to the point that they're not even, you don't even look like you're having fun. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, people are like, well, wait, like I, I came out to have a good time. And now these, like these people I thought were my friends I was coming to see or whatever, being like weird and standoffish. And it's like, Oh, well this is awkward. And so we kind of were like, well, let's, let's not do that. And even Cody's outfit, you know, came from that, like, he's going to be like a WWE character, basically kind of the, the total, like, uh, I don't know what the word is, but like everything about the super macho, like rock dude, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And those people, it, those people generally are like, have no self-awareness. So, right. so it's Absolutely. funny because you got a guy that is completely self-aware that he is trying to be this self unaware, you know, like where's an American flag, like, like sleeve, right. right yeah. The Bud Light hat. Like. It's ridiculous. And, and it's funny. And, and I love shit like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, there was a lot of bands back in the day in the nineties and in the two thousands that were like, yeah, we're goofy as fuck. And right. uh, I felt like something got lost in the sauce. I don't know if it was the the new metal thing took itself too seriously. I, I don't I don't know exactly what happened, but it got to a point where rock bands stopped being fun at, at yeah. some point. And uh and that's something that, that I don't know. You, like you you gotta have fun. We were at this show one time at this place called Peabody's in Cleveland. This was back in the two thousands, and there was a band, a bunch of tough guys playing Pantera riffs, and then they're like talking about the their moshers. They're like, "Where are my moshers at?" And then, and then, like in the middle of the breakdown of the song, this fucking tough guy and with, with no self awareness was like, "All right." Who wants cupcakes and throws cupcakes in the audience? <laughs> but but this is the thing. It wasn't a bit. He was like really serious. And then all of a sudden the who wants cupcakes. And it's like, I want to be the band that is like who wants cupcakes, but is like completely aware of how ridiculous that is. Right. Well, and and the thing is, like, if if you're not having fun, the audience likely isn't going to have fun, especially on like the I like the local level, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where you're playing like somewhere small where people aren't like necessarily coming out to see you specifically. They're just there and you're playing. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. It just, it's more fun for everybody that way. And you can still take the music seriously. Cause we take our, our like, you know, I like to write the songs and when we're in practice, you know, we're not just like dicking around the whole time, but the show should be fun, you know? And, and, all that to be said, I try to translate some of that to the online stuff because I think the same thing. People get really wrapped up in the like, well, I don't want my band to be cheesy or corny or whatever. And I'm and and being on social media or or trying to, you know, rep your own stuff, that's tacky. That's not cool, man. And it's like, well, you can choose between like cool points or people you know, listening to your band, people will be like, bro, you know, tool never made a TikTok." And like, yeah, that's because they've been famous for like 40 years, bro. That's of course there was no internet. They, they had Beavis and Butthead, like Beavis and Butthead. I just watched a Finn McKenty video that really broke down how important Beavis and Butthead was to heavy music right. in the nineties. And, uh, you know, avant-garde music in the nineties bands like Ween and Guar and Danzig and White Zombie and all that stuff. Like Beavis and right. Butthead was a huge popular show that was the launching pad for so many of these sure. weird bands that sh that shaped and molded who we are. Um, here's a question for you: How many? Because so you kind of changed your sound around. You got rid of the older records, right? Right. Right. Okay. So once you started adopting this newer style, how like? Hey, give me a percentage. How many? What percentage of shows do you feel like a complete fucking alien when you're there listening to the other bands? Is it is that a high percentage? Uh, I mean, yes, especially 100%. for the the early stuff. They kind of never knew where to put us. Um, right. We've had a couple of promoters that have really 
gotten behind us and, and believed in us, which has been great. But the scene itself was like, there's tons of pop punk in Orlando. So for a while we would be the band that would just clear the room. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like been there, be like dude. Two, two bands and then the headline or us and then the headliner. And then we, we go on, everybody goes outside. We finish, everybody comes back inside. Um, but in the last like year and a half, We've been playing with a lot of, uh, you know, heavy bands, a lot of uh, that it's this new metal revival things kind of going on, um, which there's been a lot of that crossover for us. So awesome. Re- recently, we've been finding a lot more people that are really, uh, you know, open minded to just like whatever people are doing. I think it may be because, you know, two years of no shows, people are just hungry for good music. You know what I mean? They don't really care what it is right um and then i think heavy heavy bands and heavy audiences unless you're in you know playing with a bunch of like death metal bands that are like super elitist or whatever um a lot of metal heads are pretty open-minded as as long as you know the the riffs are good and the you know people are shredding up there which we we've dialed back our our shred to song ratio used to be 95% 95% shred, 5% song. <laughs> right. You know, so people would walk away being like, damn, those guys can play, but they wouldn't remember any of the songs. So we've had to, you know, dial that in. But yeah, it's been it's been a slow progression to not be the complete alien, but we still kind of are. But I feel like if you're the alien at any sort of show, if you're the band that doesn't fit, I if you bring a good show a good entertaining show and in the musicality is on point because it, it's very it doesn't take a rocket scientist to to watch a 15 second clip of y'all and be like okay these motherfuckers can play and i think that's like i think that's where people don't necessarily aren't really as worried about what the content is as far as lyrical content or, or vibe it's like but when you, you hear that bass solo in bumblebee you're just like yo this dude is shredding this this is fun. This is weird. This is sick. I'm I'm with it. Yeah. That that's how I feel at least. Hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean that's we've we've found a lot of the times that it kind of it kind of plays in our favor to be the odd man out because if we're like we played a show um you know it's like all thrash bands and we love thrash and all the bands are great. Super nice dudes, fun time, but you know, we are so left field to that that you know people are going to walk away from the show and they're going to remember the odd man out you know um hopefully um and yeah yeah i I, yes 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 (laughs) how long have you been playing the bass guitar and is it was that your original instrument or are you a, a guitar guy that started doing the bass well i really wanted to play the drums initially um that makes sense yeah, so I started playing. I got a bass for my 12th birthday, so 13 years going on 14 years. I've been playing bass. Um, but, you know, when I was 10 or 11, I had some like childhood friends that uh, there was like four brothers and and their dad was a musician who had gotten them. You know, they had like acoustic guitars and my friend Alan had a like this little shitty electric drum kit it was it was basically just drum pads all in like one housing with a little speaker on it nice um and so (laughs) me and one of the other brothers started just i was banging on it and he was playing guitar and i was like oh hell yeah dude like let's write some songs so we wrote some songs like little one minute our first song was called some cool song um (laughs) and uh i went home and was like i gotta get a drum kit and my parents were like no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not buying a drum kit. Um, and then my my friend whose drums they were, I think got he got a little jealous that I was I was playing his drums more than he was. So he he picked up the sticks and got good because he was I was only over there you know like every Saturday or what it, whatever it was. So he had more time to practice. So then eventually they were like, all right, if we're gonna do this band, he's the drummer man. He's he's spending time doing it. Like you got to play something else. So my first bass was technically a uh, just an down tuned acoustic guitar that I was just you know fingering away on, and then eventually I convinced my parents it's like I, all I want 
is a base. So, yeah. Got me a little red Ibanez for my 12th birthday. That's beautiful, man. That's around the time I started playing guitar. I think it's 12, like sixth grade. Were you 12 in sixth grade? Yeah. yeah, I was going. I think it was going into sixth grade or just started sixth grade. Yeah, cool. Essentially yeah. the same timeline. So um, now, would you say that a lot of what you wanted to do drumming wise, you've kind of translated onto the bass? Because I would say, like, I mean, it's it's a percussive instrument. It's a it's, sure. a, it's a rhythmic instrument. So you can tell in that that solo that you're doing on Bumblebee. Like there's, there's rhythm going on. There's like, so would you say that you kind of are be, like in a way you're a drummer on a four string instrument? Yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely, uh, comes through in my playing a lot. A lot of the times when I'm listening to, you know, an album or just music in general, the first thing I'm listening to is the drummer. Um, and, uh, you know, I've got some of the music theory stuff, some of the melodic stuff down, but really I, I don't think about like notes as much as I think about just like cool patterns and cool rhythms and stuff like that and stuff that like is fun for me to play. Um, so, yeah, I, I think so. I I've t- was actually talking to Grant, our drummer, about that. And he was like, yeah, that makes it makes a lot of sense that you wanted to play the drums because I feel like he was like rhythmically a lot of the things you play are like lock right in with the, the drums, which, you know, I guess plays into the the whole bass player thing, but. Right. But, it, but it's apparent even objectively from the outside, you know, me being just some dude that barely knows you or your band. I'm like, I'm like, yo, this is like some percussive, uh, insane rhythmic shit. So, yeah. So yeah, that's why when you're like, I wanted to be drummer, I was like, makes sense, because in yeah, my brain, I'm yeah. like, this is a percussive, rhythmic motherfucker right here. And I'll I'll still get that drum kit one day. I don't have one, one day. yet, but one day, one day I'm gonna get that ukulele I always wanted. But um, okay, so more questions. Did you now? So Bumblebee got shared. Like how many how many views did that Bumblebee clip um get? On the on the clock app and and it got shared all over the place. I think I, I honestly I think Psycho Six shared it on Facebook is where I first yeah. saw it. That was that was a huge mind fuck because I remember uh, my brother had like one of those big thick uh, iPods. I don't know what year it would have been mid two thousands that had their their beer is good beer is good. Uh, that was oh six. 2006 and, is when they put that yeah song. so would it yeah probably around then 2006 2007 because i think it was technically my sister's ipod um, <laughs> but i just remember me and one of my buddies would put that song on all the time and just laugh our like fifth grade asses off just like beer is good beer is good yeah so when i saw that notification come to i was like huh <laughs> um, but yeah it it really that was very surprising. It really took off. Um, and especially on TikTok, there was a couple, we never posted the full video. I don't think, um, just clips and stuff. And it was kind of like Grant, our drummer, uh, edited that video and did an amazing job. Um, so big, big kudos to him. Cause I think the, it's like perfect TikTok content because it's so like ADHD and the yeah. way it's edited. Yeah, oh, yeah. Basically anytime we posted it, it, went viral in in some way you know but the the big one on there i think has about 200k okay cool yeah because uh so we met psycho stick back in 06 07 and this is this is like a just to put it into context this is like a year after youtube came out right youtube started in like 05 and uh mm-hmm. psycho stick went viral on this thing called sirius xm liquid metal and their their beer song went viral before going viral on youtube was a thing and they we started doing shows with them and i was drinking a lot at the time so they didn't really want to fuck with me um but long story short that's like my band's brother band like like they've taken us on i think 12 tours now so yeah so i mean so they're definitely just our friends and when Mm. and murph is the guy that edits all their videos and when he finds something weird online he'll share it like he's he's like He's in tune with all the social media stuff because he's like constantly evolving 
and getting better at the video editing. If you look at any of their video content, like Psycho Stick's video content is like top notch. And they're yeah. what's funny is they're getting into TikTok now kind of late um, and doing the short form stuff. But when they shared that, I followed y'all on TikTok and I think I messaged you and I was just like, when are we playing in Florida together? And now here we are on a podcast. So, and anytime come to Florida. Have y'all been down here before? Yes. Did you guys play with a band or know a band called Gargamel? Yes. Uh, well, we played with a band called en- Endorphin as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they were fr- uh, actually Jimmy from Endorphin was in Psycho Stick in the 2000s. Um, the lead singer, the guy that has the blue hair and mm-hmm. wears the Superman shirt. I don't know if you've seen them around. I think they just started doing stuff in Orlando again. Yeah. They just, I think they just did a like reunion show a few months ago something at the haven that's yeah that's so wild dude i played down i've been touring since like oh six i played down in orlando like a buttload of times we the most recent we did was will's pub hell yeah will's rules and uh it was on like a tuesday in 2018 and it rained a lot and but it was was, uh, that sounds like florida it was a decent show um i remember being decent but yeah, uh, did, 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 did. What, what was I getting at? I was going to say something. But, okay, so anyway, yeah, Psycho Stick. And, but the, the, the other bands, the other Florida bands we used to play with is a band called uh, Retardo Bot, which like their name wouldn't fly these days. But um, they were uh, not a Tallahassee band, but a, what is the coastal by um, the, what it's the the Gulf of Mexico, uh, clear, yeah, clear water, uh, is it? Pete. St. Pete. Yeah, Clearwater St. Pete. They're all the, yeah, all Saint the same Pete. thing. So so this was a band, uh, a guy named Peter Pepper had a band called Retardo Bot that we would play with a lot out there. And uh yeah, but this was all two thousands because like like y'all would have fit in in the two thousands, there was this kind of renaissance yeah. it, it, of uh touring bands that would all tour together and it was Screaming Mechanical Brain, Dog Fashion Disco, Tub Ring, yeah. My Band Downtown Brown, Retardo Bot, um, Psycho Stick. And Foxy Shazam before they kind of turned pop. Do you do you know Foxy Shazam? Yeah, uh, that's another one. Funny you say that. Uh, that another one that was on that iPod. It was oh, I can't remember the song, but it's the one like she said the four words to me. E or ooh, what? I, ah, ooh, ah, biggity, 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 boom. Yep. Yeah. They don't yeah. play that anymore. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say one of my buddies was like, "Oh yeah, you gotta check out this Foxy Shazam song." I was like, "Oh, hell yeah!" I remember them being like weird and crazy, and I put it on, and it wasn't bad it was just completely different from uh it's like disco-y kind of what's funny is when you brought up that whole we had a sound and it didn't it isn't what we were doing anymore so we got rid of it they actually removed their first album flamingo trigger from all streaming services and that is their scrunky weird album that has the biggity biggity bow thing on it that that doesn't exist you can only listen to it on youtube so if you look up if you look up fox shazam on Apple Music, or if you look at, look them up on Spotify, that album isn't on there. It's not part of their discography, and it, it's a it's a stylistic choice because they got sure. signed to a major and they put out what um, what was their first major label debut, which was called Introducing Foxy Shazam, and they they just kind of changed up their sound. They like it, it was more of like a poppy, rocky, like mm-hmm. Queen kind of yeah. over the top thing or, uh, as that band uh the darkness kind of like that well the darkness Cla- actually pro- rock yeah the darkness produced their album called the church of rock and roll so the fact that you say that uh, yeah they have a uh, yeah it, it, it's all connected in some weird way but but like i was saying before in the mid 2000s like if if you weren't a baby if you were old like me and all my friends we would have all been touring together in the in the 2000s mm-hmm. because it would have been bands like tub ring and Dog Fashion oh, Disco. I love mechanical. Tub Ring. I, you mentioned Dog Fashion Disco. I was actually just messaging Todd Smith the other day on Facebook about he had said somewhere in their group that they were going to play some Florida shows. I was just trying to figure out when because my sep- he was he had mentioned maybe September. My September's packed, so I was like, "Hey, bro, like, I know you guys said this. I'm trying to figure out. I'm not trying to leak the insider info, but like, when it, when and where are y'all playing? Because I'm trying to come through. Actually, I think it's Polka Dot Cadavers playing." But still. Yeah. Well, and and this is the thing that I like about the internet and about the music world at large is it's a very small it, it's a big world, right? But it's right. small because all it took was for Psycho Stick 
to share one fucking video of y'all's, and now you're talking to Todd Smith, who is, I mean, we've toured with Polka Dot Cadaver. We, like, we've toured with Dog right. and Disco. And so all the weird bands, we kind of all stick together in a weird way. We all know each yeah. other. So the, the, fact, the fact that Psycho Sticks shared your shit, now you're like just kind of homies with the weird bands. I like that. Yeah. I, I love it. That's one of the <laughs> things too. Playing playing here is like uh, got to know the guys in Gargamel, and they're they're the same kind of way. Where I'm talking to them, and they're like, I'm like, oh yeah, I mentioned something about like Sleepy Time Gorilla Museum, and they're like, oh yeah, we've yep. a bunch of shows with those guys. Yep, <laughs> bro, that's like one of my favorite bands. Yeah, there's not too many like I, there's not too many like bungle worship like fucking ultra uh, eclectic weird bands, and so when when one pops up, like we're all just kind of like, oh, another one of us, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's it's the nice <laughs> thing about the internet like scene is you meet people that are like minded and it's not just like, oh, I heard about this band that's maybe in this other city that might exist. It's like, oh no, there's y'all and dog fashion disco and tub rain. Like, yeah, it's 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 sick. It's been really, really like I said, with the psycho stick thing, it's been kind of a mind fuck to be like, oh, wait, I am just like talking with these people. I, I know these people. We're all just dudes. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Uh, you know, especially when in, I forget what year I met the Fishbone guys. We actually hooked up with them in That's Florida. We were playing, uh, you know who Fishbone is, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we, Love we, Fishbone. we were playing with them in uh, Fort Lauderdale. And that's when we like really clicked with Fishbone and they they started taking us on tours after that. But there there was a minute there where I was like, yo, these guys are like superheroes. Like Angela right. Moore is a fucking superhero. But it gets to the point where you hang out with these people long enough and and you're like, "Oh, this is this is my homie." You know what I mean? Right. So like, so that whole psycho stick thing, like it, I'm I'm sure it felt good at the time, but let me assure you, they're just dudes and yeah. and they're nerds. <laughs> and we're all <laughs> nerds. Part. Yeah. Yeah. He and I have, uh, I think it's Rob on their socials. Maybe not. Um, Murph is the uh, socials guy. Oh, okay, then it's Murph. It, we've we've uh, exchanged a couple. Of, he he's been very sweet to us. We we've, we've talked a few times. So um, definitely appreciate those guys, and would love to get up there. Are they in Chicago? They're in Chicago now. Yeah. Word word word. Oh, before I forget, by the way, there's another Michigan band, and I'm sure you because you're a Michigan guy, right? Yeah. Okay. So and and child and bite. What's that? Is the band Child Bite? No, it's a band called McWeekerton. Oh, and I, I've never heard of them. I'm not sure where they're from in Michigan. I just assume that, you know, it's like when you tell people you're in Florida and everybody thinks you live at Disneyland. I'm just going to assume that you know every band, but you should check them out. And all the people in the ether, listen to McWeekerton. They're very good. McWeekerton. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I'll send it to you. I'm glad you did. Well, I'm glad you I didn't forget to, to throw out. that in there. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So... More questions. When now, so Bumblebee hit. Did you did you notice? Like, not only were you getting more attention online, but did you see that translate into a better reception with your live performances? Like a better draw? Were promoters Definitely. were promoters taking you more seriously? Like, how did that affect all of the real life shit? Well, like the like I said, we've we've been really fortunate in um, Orlando, and we've had a couple promoters. Um, that have really been with us for a long time. Uh, uh, shout out Montgomery drive and in docs of booking um, our boy, uh, Marshall from Montgomery drive has been, he like got us our start basically playing this little club downtown called 64 um, or 64 North rather. Uh, and he's believed in us since, you know, 2015 been with us ever since. So we've, like I said, we've been very fortunate there, but like you mentioned with draw, like we, we played a show, um, uh, I guess it was early May. We opened for battles and uh, sick. Yeah, it was awesome. And we had a couple, probably eight or 10 people from all over the state that drove, you know, four or five hours. And I, ex- I was like, oh, that's really nice that you came for us and battles expecting them to stay. I'm like, all right, well, anyways, I just came for your 25 minute set. I'm going to leave now. Like, oh, <laughs> worry, you're going to drive the four hours back to Miami now. I was like, I figured you were here for them. They're like, no, we're here for you. Um, and it's that's happened multiple times where we've, you know, played somewhere and somebody will walk up and be like, hey, I, I know you from the, the Internet. And you're like, oh, you you do? 
I was running the door at a show and somebody was yeah. like, you're that Primus band guy from TikTok, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, I, I, I am, that's me. Um, and yeah, so it, it's been, it, it, we have definitely seen some of that. Our biggest chunk of people for some reason is Texas. So we're trying to get out to, to Texas sometime next year and, and really put that to the test um, and see the power of the clock app. But uh, yeah, so far it's been, you know, cause people always talk about that. We're like, well, you can, you can have a bunch of followers. It doesn't always mean people are coming out and that's true. But for some reason, I feel like uh, all my experience with TikTok people has been different than other social media. For some reason, TikTok people are very, uh, very committed, you know? Yeah, it, it was while we were in New York City because I just got back from tour and there is a dude that follows me on TikTok that came to the show, bought like four t-shirts, put a $50 bill in the gas donation jar but didn't even say hey to me. <laughs> and, I was, and then he messaged me afterwards, just like, great show. And there was like 25 paid at that show. Right. And it's like, it's like, dude, like I was literally but, eating pizza at the bar, bro. You could have yeah, come, come and say, say hey, dude. Come hang out. It was cute though, because he's just like, that was fucking amazing. And he was like posting TikToks about it and like bought three shirts and like gave us a bunch of money. But it's like, it's like, yeah, I wanted to say hi to you, but you were talking to someone. It's like, dude, like if you're gonna like support my band like that, come say what's up because I want to give you a fucking hug, man. You know, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, TikTok. I feel like TikTok people are are built a little different. It's um, I feel like there's a there's a personal element to it, and I don't know if it's because there's video, um, but it feels way less contrived than something like an Instagram. I feel like. When you get Definitely. to know create, like especially just me watching either you or whether whether it's Brett Crow or, uh, you know, um, you know who Brooks Allison is who does the uh, the remixes. You, you ever sure. you ever seen the dude that kind of looks like me with the blonde hair and he's got a mustache and does the remixes? He's on bass and guitar like in the corner and does remixes of stuff. I, a lot mm, of it goes viral. Have. You've seen his shit on TikTok, but but it's weird. I talk to these people, you know, just from watching their TikTok content when they come on my show i'm like oh i know you like i like dude i feel like i fucking know you even yeah, though this same. is the first time we're talking it's it's odd right yeah it's and, and like you you mentioned the difference between somewhere like tiktok or instagram like the big thing i've noticed is you know you can say like hey you know new songs out on instagram or whatever and people will be like yeah dope i'll, I'll go check it out and maybe like a quarter of those people will but on TikTok, you're like, hey, go listen to this. And people will be like, okay, sure, I'll be right back. And then five minutes later, they come back and are like, okay, here's the things I liked about it. You know, we've had people do that. They'll hear the one song. I'm like, oh, well, we've got a record out if you want to check it out. I'm like, okay. And then 30 minutes later, like the length of the record, they comment and they're like, hey, these are my favorite <laughs> songs. This is, it's like, wow. For some reason, you can say, hey, go here and do this thing. And people on TikTok will be like, okay, sure. Yeah, it's odd, dude. Yeah, it's it's cool. I'm not com you know I'm not gonna complain. Pe people are uh, people are passionate about the music, it seems. Yeah, and it, it's a beautiful thing. It, it yeah, it's real wild. But I've also there is, there is a dark side to it too because I, I've like I've just posted opinion stuff that had nothing to do with my music where people have straight up told me to unalive myself and, and yeah I don't I mean, know do, do you place. get any negativity because I I feel like. I feel like you don't really rustle any feathers because so much of your content is just solely based on we're this band, check it out, we do this. But but does anyone come at you with the, the negativity, the negative vibes? Uh, yeah, we've definitely got get our fair share of uh, people that are you know just trying to be assholes, you know. Um, and it usually comes in the form because sometimes people will ask, you know, like uh, they'll be like, "This reminds me of Primus," but. I mean, then it's a good thing. You know what I mean? And it's like, or like somebody asked me one time, like, does that, does it bug you when people ask that question or compare you or whatever? And like, it, it all depends on how you're doing it. You know what I mean? How you're phrasing it. Cause some people will be like, so this is just Primus. And like, well, I, right. I, mean, I guess if you want to be, if you want to be like that. Um, <laughs> but we've definitely had, you know, that's most of what we get is people being like, well, this is just this thing. Or, you know, one time I mentioned Mr. Bungle and they're like, I was like, oh, if you like, you know, these bands, um, and Mr. Bungle was one of them and like, check us out. 
And this guy was like, you know, take all those other bands, take your band. I'll just have Mr. Bungle. I don't need anything else. Like, all right, word. Thank you, I guess. That dude is probably 45 years old who said that. Like, hey, I I like Mr. Bungle, too. Me, too. One of my favorites we got one time was like something like, I'm only interested in originals. I'm not interested in copies. (laughs) Okay, thanks, man. I appreciate the feedback. It's well, I don't know. There are bands out there like Greta Van Fleet, which are way more derivative than what you got. What the way I look at what y'all are doing is you take you're taking a bunch of different elements from bands you enjoy and just mixing it all up and getting fucking real weird with it. Right. Well, and and that's, you know, the way I think about it too is, you know, if if we say we're a carbon copy, if we're gonna be a carbon copy of anybody, I'd want it to be the uncopyable band. You know what I mean? It's Primus. Nobody's <laughs> Primus. So if we're going to compare us to somebody, you know what I mean? Like we can be compared to that. But, you know, I, I think uh, I know I can and put my head on the pillow at night and, and sleep well, knowing that I've made, you know, something honest to my own creativity. And, um, you know, I think there's enough, like you said, it's a there's a lot of elements surface level. Sure. There's a lot of heavy Primus influence. But right. There's a lot of other you know, stuff in there. Cause fun, fun fact about the flag boys. When we first started, I was the only one that liked Primus. In fact, our guitar player, when I first showed him, <laughs> he knew like John, the fisherman from like guitar hero. When I showed him more stuff, he was like, bro, I gotta be honest with you. I hate this band. I do not like this at all, but just like it did for me when I was a kid, he said there was something, it was like Southbound Pachyderm. He hated everything he heard, but he liked that one song. So he just kept coming back to that song. And then it was two songs and then it was three songs. And then next thing I know, he's coming to the show with me. He's like, bro, this is the best. And like it did the, the slow growing on you. It did the same thing. Yeah. I hate to say it, but um, I got nothing but respect for less and everything he does in Lair, And, and you know, those dudes are amazing musicians, but I'm not, I'm not huge on Les's vocals. I'm more sure. of a, I'm more of a King Diamond, uh, Judas Priest, Mike Patton. Like, I mean, I, oh, yeah. um, and, th- and that's the other thing too, is like, if people want to compare you to Primus. Like maybe there's similar rhythms and, and similar like bass techniques being utilized. But when you start singing, you're not doing like, ding, 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 dong, ding, dong, ding. You're not doing the Les Claypool. You're doing this fucking, like it's, it's different. It's well, different. That's, and that's what I always think about is like, I, I think that's the thing that people, when they hear a bass that's not doing just like, you know, running with the devil, like bump, 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 <laughs> bump. As soon as they hear it doing anything other than just that, they're like, this is Primus. This is Primus. And it's like, all right, not to be a dick, but like it, if it's your first day, you know, you haven't do- dove real deep into it and about the elements of it. Sure. It can be Primus. That's fine. But, you know, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of other things, you know, it, it that those are the things that get to me more when it's just like, bro, are, are you listening? Like, lis- listen to it. You know, it can be similar, but at least give it, you know, give it a chance. Well, I think um, people, they have to make base comparisons to things for them to make sense in their brain. And the, right. I, like, the most I, obvious thing. Right. The most glaringly obvious thing. And I, I run, there was a long time where I ran into the same shit with my band and people would be like, Tenacious D because uh, like I was, I was fat for a long time and I have like an operatic kind of like a singing voice and Damn. I do, and I do faces like this on stage. Sure. And so we always got the Tenacious D thing, but it's, See, that's so funny. Cause I don't feel like sonically you guys sound, we don't really anything, but when like you, it. and that's the stuff that pisses me off. Yes. It's like, bro, just li- listen to it with your ears. Does this sound anything like that like yeah it can be similar if you're doing you know operatic stuff or whatever but like jack black didn't invent making a face like right but even if he did it's not even the same kind of music (laughs) i agree but in people's minds they're like fat guy big eyes he can sing and he's doing stuff with his hands tenacious d that's it that's all it is fat guy with big eyes doing stuff with his hands that can sing Tenacious, tenacious D. D. It D. Makes sense. Any band with those things, Tenacious D. Yeah, and and they, you know, they're like, they're like, uh, you know, funky rhythm and you know, thumpy bass, Primus. Right. You know, it's just right. it, it it's a shortcut 
to any sort of crit- critical thinking or reasoning. So do do you think it's gotten that's gotten worse with like the immediacy of TikTok because you know people talk about attention spans going down with the all this videos being so in your face um like cuz that's where I thought about it cuz we had that conversation before where like you know it, it is that people want to make the most base comparison but yeah. do you think it's gotten worse over the time cuz now the videos are only you know 7 seconds long and so all they only have you know seven seconds to think about it um uh, yeah I, it's hard to say whether or not it's gotten worse but i think uh people base and and i can tell you this just based on like the the videos i make where i talk for nine seconds people tell me that i'm the worst person ever people <laughs> make snap judgments based off sure. of off of very small amounts of media so they're gonna they're gonna watch your nine second digga 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 base thing and they're gonna be like right. Primus and sure. they're gonna watch me uh, like a bunch of old people are gonna watch me complain about how my mother's health is failing and they're gonna immediately be like cry baby millennial you know Jesus so, dude I saw one of those videos it pissed me off yeah that was uh, insane yeah I had a bunch of actual boomers and not you know how you just say you're, you're a boomer because you're acting like a boomer these were actual right. boomers. Somehow my video got on Boomer Talk because I'm talking about how, you know, my, my mom is getting older and it's hard. And it's just, dude, it was hundreds of strangers telling me that I need to grow a pair and that, like, how do you think she feels? And the whole reason I made the video is because I was watching her cry because she's not having a good time, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, I would say I don't know if the comparison of like the the quick musical bass comparison thing is getting worse or not, but I think people, especially even with dating, you know, and the right. the, the the swipe culture, people are very quick to judge other human beings based off of like very short snippets of media, and and they'll right. even they'll you know human beings are complex. And you can't just like watch someone talking for nine seconds and be like, this is, this person's terrible. And, right. Unless they're like, in that nine seconds, they're like, you know, completely racist or homophobic right. or, 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 you know, misogynistic or just like all right. the terrible things. Doing something actually awful. Exactly. Like if you're doing, like if it shows, a, 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 if it's a man punching a woman in the face in that nine second video, judge that man. But if it's, right. so, if it's someone playing guitar for nine seconds, but see, those videos are where the people will go. Well, we don't have the full context. Well, we don't have the the full shitheads. Like, Wait, where were we'll you that. on the other video? Yeah, shitheads will say that. But yeah, but always. yeah, I think that I think the climate and with social media and TikTok in general, it's we're in a swipe culture where we're mm-hmm. looking at stuff and we're making a snap judgment really quickly, and then we're just moving on with our lives. We're like, oh, fuck sure. this person, fuck this person, or and the thing with TikTok is because there's the anonymity involved. I feel like people will make a snap judgment and then they'll like try to insult you and then move on. You know, like, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? That's always the, it seems like that's usually more in my experience. They want you to engage in some sort of negative way and like show that it got to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I was having a conversation with a friend about that where we were saying like, if you're going to respond, I usually just try to diffuse it with a joke or, you know, I'll respond yes. to the video, but make something dumb out of it. Correct. And then, again, point back to, anyways, listen to Flagman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and nine times out of ten, the person will either comment, you know, like, oh, that's not. They, they, nine times out of ten, they walk it back or they delete it. Um, which is always, you know, it's nice to get one over on the trolls and be like, ah, I got you. I made you. I made you realize there's a person on the other end. Yeah, you kill you kill him with kindness. That it, yeah, well, it definitely is a thing. And and what I notice is when I do that, when I say something silly, or when I make fun of myself in response to them trying to make fun of me, that diffuses it. There's so many ways to diffuse it, but the the times like yo, when all those boomers were coming at me, yeah, and, you can't and, do anything about that. And I was getting really pissed, and I was actually co- coming at people shit just got worse it just like yeah. it became like a snowball effect it's because these these dickheads are like oh the crybaby's crying more let's like let's pile right. on them some more kind of thing you yeah know? it just turns into a dog pile and and then you get that like uh because the like 
the algorithms feed off of like pain and suffering. They love that, it. Like w- once you get that negative ball rolling, you just get all of a sudden it's like you're the rage guy. You know what I mean? And people are like, you're on rage talk. And mm. a- everybody that wants to be angry is here now. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I don't know. I'm surrounded by all types of weirdness, especially lately. There's, there's been just so many people dying and drama and then, you know, the political climate, everyone's pissed off. And so Mm. like, I would like, and I've said this on my last podcast, I would like for my content and for what I do with my band to be a a kind of a bastion of escapism of, of distraction, just a a way a positivity, you know, a a way for people to kind of turn off from all the terribleness. And my, my band's always been a really fun, goofy thing. And I want to bring that same energy to the bullshit I make on the stupid clock app because, man, dude, people are so pissed these days, and and I can't handle it. Like my brain feels like it's about to explode, bro. I yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm with you, hundred percent, dude. My brain can't take it anymore. I I've had a headache for ten days. No, yeah, for <laughs> real. You just like yeah, exactly. You just get into the the doom scrolling, and you're just like, oh, everything is bad. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm with you. I want it to. It's kind of back to like the the thing we were talking about about making sure you're having fun on stage. It's like I want this to be a, a fun thing, you know. Yes, um, it's always great when people use their platforms for good, um, but it's also, uh, you know, you see somebody will be like, "Hey, let's talk about you know whatever the current awful event is at the show," and you just feel like the air suck out of the room. I'm yeah. Just like, hey, I know we're all having fun, but let's talk about this awful thing real quick. Now we're back to fun. You're like, all right, well, I appreciate it, but also we could have just, you know, everybody was here on a Friday night to have a good time, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, music <laughs> can be the best antidote to the terribleness that is the real world. And yeah, if um, like, I, it's one thing if you're rage against the machine. It's one. It's that, that, that exactly. It's if, one if thing. You have something like eloquent to say if you have a good point. Yes, you know. But it's. But I've been in the position before where I was throwing like like really like pissed off social commentary in between dick jokes, and and right. it got to the point where I'm like, do I want to be the guy? on the soapbox telling everyone what they already know about how the government's corrupt and police are terrible. Like I'll throw it in there as like a joke. You know, we have, we have a song that we played on the last tour. I'm just like, we're all going to die, you know, but I don't know. I just want to, I want to, I want to bring it up in a way where I'm like, let's party about it kind of thing. Right. Cause I, yeah. And that's really the thing is like a a lot of the times when you're like uh, both of the things you said, I was like, I, you see people that like, you know, the music is not the the platform that they're using to, uh, you know, get those messages across. So a lot of times it comes across very like, uh, not that it should be rehearsed, but they, they don't really have anything to say about it. They're just like, oh, that shit sucks. And you're like, that's true. Like you said, everybody in the room agrees with you. We yeah. all we all know that, but now we're all thinking about it. <laughs> On the, we're here for we're here to party, and now everybody's sad. Yeah, and I I just think I think there are people that need to be the loud voices in these situations, and I've Absolutely. just I've made a conscious choice to to just be a guy that just w- wants people to fucking laugh and dance and have a good time. And, and, right. and, and there's a way to do it. There's a way to just be like, Hey, this shit's fucked up. Let's, um, right. let's fucking get real sweaty now. Like, I, yeah, absolutely. Cause I mean, it's always great to, you know, bring awareness. I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying that like, we shouldn't talk about it, but I always, like you said, I've kind of found in, in, uh, my own life that like, I'm, not the most eloquent and i'm not by any stretch the smartest guy in the room same Um, so (laughs) i'm gonna have my my ears wide open i'm gonna listen yes and uh you know somebody asks me if i'm you know somebody wants to talk about i'll more than happy to discuss it and i was talking to somebody else about this the other day you know none of our songs are overtly political but my my views are infused in there you know so like you said i don't often want to be the guy on the soapbox when it's Friday night and everybody's trying to escape from the, the hell world that we Same. live in, you know? 
and I'm yeah, and I'm I think it just got to the point where I feel like so many people feel like they need to amplify the outrage, mm. and I, my brain just can't handle it, dude. I I, I want to be the distraction from the outrage. Like you can be outraged yeah. all you want, but for this forty five minutes, we're gonna fucking have a blast. God damn it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and sometimes that the outrage, like uh, amplification, can over. So many people are just talking to, are doing the outrage that it's you're not getting to the the people that are have a like hey here's a solution here's something we should do are then drowned out in the sea of people that are just like I'm pissed off you know well I think ultimately what it comes down to is is it, it, solution or not like we're us regular ass Joes and and Joe Ets and Joe they them's we're just we're fucking powerless you know. And I think that's where all that, that that's where all the outrage and the the fucking anger is coming from is a place of knowing that we're not in control and and it's oh, yeah. it's it's maddening but also man um I like I got to control what's right in front of me and that's this Absolutely. That's this fucking microphone and this computer thing and I'm talking to Sam from Flagman who is a flag boy and um it's a thing. We're, Absolutely. It's a thing. So, okay, um, I'm trying to make these episodes more succ- succinct. Succinct. Sure. So let's talk about the new signal, which is called Nice Guy, I believe, right? Yes, indeed. It comes out, I don't know when this will be out, but it comes out July 1st, which is in three hours from when we're recording this. Yeah, it comes out July 1st, 2022, which is uh, tomorrow, which if this premieres on July 1st, it's today. And if this premieres Hell on yeah. July 2nd, it is yesterday. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it, the... Uh, it's the uh, like flagship single. Uh, the I won't spoil it yet because we don't have the the art yet. Which speaking of another clock app person, uh, Freak Bait. Um, I don't know if you've seen their stuff on TikTok. Amazing Sounds cool. Artist. Um, he does all of our at least this last run of uh, songs and our coming record. Um, he's done all the artwork um, and uh, go check out his stuff. Really, Looks really, cool. Really yeah. Cool. Um, but, uh, like I said, I won't spoil it cause we're waiting on the artwork, but the, the album title is somewhere in these lyrics for nice guy. So listen real close. Cause the, the new record is derived from, uh, the nice guy lyrics. Okay. Quick question. Y'all have like four, is it four singles that are out right now or is it uh, three? This will be the third. Okay, so this is the third, and so these are all songs that are going to be going on the full length? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. and the full length, there no title yet, but it's in the lyrics to Nice it Guy. It is in, indeed it is. And no artwork yet, correct? Uh, it's on the way. I was actually just talking to him uh, earlier this week, and he's crafting because he does all those clay models. I love um, it. Yeah, it's super, super cool. Yeah. Um, he said he's gonna have something to us pretty soon. So, how many total tracks are you thinking? Uh, I think we recorded eight songs. Okay, eight. And, and when okay. when do you think the album is gonna drop? How many more singles before the actual album drops? You know, that's the question. We don't know. This um, streaming is very similar to. Uh, it's like Spotify is just another social media platform where, like, you know, TikTok wants you to post you know, three times a day and yeah. Instagram wants you to post twice a week or whatever it is right. for the algorithm. You know, Spotify loves singles. They want you to post, you know, every month if you could. Um, we don't know. We've had this more discussions about that. Do we want to put out the, you know, one or two more singles? Because the record probably won't be out. Uh, we're talking about like fall, you know, September, October. Um Cause we are looking into physical media and all that kind of stuff. We want to give time for all that stuff to be made. Um, yeah. Vinyl takes time. Yeah, exactly. And and that's one of the big things. And it's expensive. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, so we, we want to do that. We maybe some CDs, that kind of stuff. Um, but we don't really know to be honest with you. Cause my like, uh, not contrarian, but like my, my artiste says like, well, I want to save, these are the single tracks. These are the album tracks. I want to save the deep cuts for the record, right. <laughs> you know? Um, 
but I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. There's a long, a long answer for saying, I don't know what we'll do next after this. Probably we'll probably do a, a music video. Um, will be the next thing after this. Cool. Well, and it's okay not to know because it, it, there are no rules anymore. Like, I, right. you know, I came up in a time where you went into a studio and you spent fucking five to 10 grand on a 12 song album and you printed CDs and right. you had a CD release party and there wasn't, there, I mean, there was mp3.com, but there were like, it was pre MySpace. I remember in 04, we put out our, our record and we just spent so much fucking money on it. And we had to press a thousand CDs and now, now things are different, you know? Uh, yeah, people and, like cassettes again. Yeah, it's wild. But and the other wild thing is there's no fucking rules. You listen to the shit on the radio. There's like Dua Lipa is like futuristic disco. And then there are mm-hmm. groups like a hundred gecks that are just mixing up all types of weird shit. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of these groups are becoming like really fucking popular. I'm trying to think of like what like there's so much weird shit that makes no sense that would have never flown in the two thousands that now is like I mean think of Think about how popular Death Grips got, dude. Right. Yeah. It's so. Yeah. yeah so it, and, and that's that's really I think the cool thing about like, like it's great. I mean, there, there's there's no rules anymore. Um, I always talk to my my soapbox that I get on is when people talk about you know rock music being like dead or it's not popular anymore. It's silly. I think a lot of it is like, in the mainstream or whatever is because so many people are stuck in the like old mindset of you know we're gonna record 15 songs and put them out and you know like there's not a whole lot of experimentation you know like not to drag anybody but like you said earlier you know bands like Greta Van Fleet or like stuff that's like clearly you know classic rock tribute that's just kind of member berries for like Hey, you remember this shit from the 70s Led Zeppelin was cool yeah and you're like member berries well yeah of course a a a, a teenager hearing that now is going to be like, yeah, it sounds like stuff that my dad and grandpa listened to. Right. You know, it, it's just not like pushing the envelope forward, which is fine. It's there's all, all well and good. There's a place for that. Um, but it bugs me when people act like it's some sort of cultural thing that like people just don't like to rock anymore. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe be more interesting. And, People will like to rock, you know, because everybody yeah. likes to rock. Death Grips rocks, Dua Lipa rocks. It rocks in its own way. You know what I mean? Absolutely, man. Yeah, it, It's funny. I interviewed a band in 2019 uh, in the before times before the pandemic. And this band like played at Denny's in fucking oh, Orange yeah. County, what California. Fuck up, Denny's? Yeah, but it wasn't that band. It was the band Wacko. It was the, the SoCal punk band. But But we're talking like. 250 kids inside of a Denny's like hanging off the rafters and and you can't you can't tell me watching that footage that young people don't appreciate guitar music you just can't yeah it's not true it's just it's it's you're out of touch and right and it's it's these old heads man And, and that's the thing is like I'm 41 years old bro I could subscribe to the whole things aren't the way they used to be bullshit i I came up with system of down and yada yada but but like dude it's stale what it's stale when you see these big rock fests it's the same fucking headliners that were headlining these things in Ozfest in 1999 and 2000 dude it's you know rob zombie and slipknot like slipknot like I'm not dog and Slipknot because right. they're like for them to be so heavy and be so mainstream it, it like they That's rad. Yeah, they really like broke a lot of barriers. They really changed music in a big way, but it's like dude, it's it's all it's the same fucking 20 bands that have been headlining these festivals for 22 years. It's it, right. it like it's It's crazy cuz you look at those like um like louder than life and That's what Rockville. I'm saying. Yeah, yep. and it literally is. It's like, is this just a tour? Because it's all of the same headliners. Yeah. You know, and a lot of those guys, not to drag anybody else, but I will drag Stained. Um, <laughs> drag uh, Stained, bro. Yeah. Go what ahead. is his name? Aaron Lewis. He's the worst. That guy sucks. Yeah. Um, no, so Cody went and saw them, or not them specifically, but he was at Rockville and they were playing. And he, I remember he was talking to me. I was like, how was the show after, at, you know, after everything? He's like, bro, 
stained, like we saw them, he's like, that is why if, if rock music is dead, that is why. Cause he's like the dude just hung on the microphone like this the whole night, didn't move at all, smoking a cigar and drinking whiskey, just like half singing the songs. And it was like, he was like, you could tell they were ready just to, you know, here's the check and I'm gone. And it's like, yeah. yeah. And they're headlining every single rock thing. It's like, yeah, well, of course, you know, a teenager sees that and it's like, that's boring. Yeah. Why would I want to go to that? And, and it, what's funny is why would I want to be like that? Exactly. You know? And people, it seems like a lot of these older heads are just like, yeah, man, I remember when shit was good. And they, they just can't like escape from this nostalgia thing when, there's so much fucking weird, great, new, exciting music that right. is happening. Like, and it, and it's accessible. It's right there. You just have to not that's, be fucking lazy, dude. That's the big thing. Exactly. Is yeah. it's just so much. As soon as somebody says there's no good guitar music, oh there, god. Like, well, then you're not you're not looking in the right places because there are so many bands, you know, from ranging from big to small that are doing interesting stuff in punk in metal you know in just straight up rock like anything you can think of there's somebody that's pushing the envelope that's yeah. putting out music now what's funny is hearing motherfuckers say there's no guitar heroes anymore in an age where there's the tosa nabasis and the tim hensons of the world right. it's like it's like what are you talking about like people shred harder and faster than they ever did in the 80s like like eddie van right. halen it's great. I love Eddie Van Halen. Don't get me wrong, but it's like the the shit that these kids like, and some of them are literal children. I think Tim Henson's what, like twenty right. four. Like they're they're it's this shit's mind blowing. Like music is yeah. evolving in a way that I don't even think we can quantify. And the the fact that there's a bunch of fucking you know, people my age just being like, oh, man, I don't really remember when rock and roll like Machine Gun Kelly. Blah, blah. It's like, dude. <laughs> Dude, like just open your eyes. It's all like the internet is is right there. Like, right. Like and it's it's like the frustrating thing is because it's they they want it to be they're mad that it's dead, but at the same or dead, but at the same time they won't engage with anything that's not a like classic rock tribute band. Yep. You're like, well, okay, well you can't have your cake and eat it too, you know. Yeah. And th and that's uh where Gene Simmons said, and it's all your fault. <laughs> mm -hmm. He might Gene be a little Simmons. right. He might be a little right. Rock is yeah, dead, I mean, I, and I it's all I, your I, fault. I think it's a, a lot of it is where, you know, it's where the money goes. You know what I mean? And so people are going to see the, the you know, for the for a while, like the biggest new rock band was Greta Van Fleet or these, those kind of nostalgia acts. Um which again, there's nothing wrong with that. If you like it, you want to go have a good time. You want to hear some Led Zeppelin -y songs. Hell man. Hell yeah, dude. Like, you know, more, more power to you, but, uh, don't complain that there's no, nothing new in rock, you know? Yeah. And, and then you're paying like $130 for 14th row tickets for green day Weezer, you know, like get the fuck out of here. Right. It's like, bro, it's like, there are bands like that where it's like, you know, there are, there are check the box bands for me um, that it's just like, you know what, I'll go see it just to say I saw it. But then there are also bands, a lot of bands like that from, you know, that I grew up really enjoying that. I'm like, you know what, it's just not, I missed the time to see it. Yeah. And if I see it now, I'm going to be pissed off that I paid $150 for nosebleeds. Yeah. So I'm just going to, I'll watch the, you know, live video from the nineties and that can be. I'll listen to the record and just be like, damn, it's a really good record. Yeah, I remember when I was in eighth grade and Dookie came out uh, and I was like, yo, this is amazing. But like the time to see Green Day would have been at Woodstock 94 when Dookie came out, when they were throwing mud at everybody. That would be the time for, right. you know, eighth grade Neil to see Green Day. Not like, you know, like you said, like the only concert I'll pay over $100 to see is Prince. I saw him live four times. He's no longer on oh, this yeah. planet. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, another concert I spent a lot of money to go see. I saw King Diamond on the Abigail tour. Worth oh, yeah. it. Uh, I'll, I'll spend $80 to see Iron Maiden if they come to town. Of course. I think I just spent, it wasn't quite 100 I spent like $70 to get Ween tickets. There you go. That's bands. a good one. 
So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm, that's a, that's a, like, I would, I'll see them anytime. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. There's been very few shows that I would pay, you know, more than a hundred bucks for, especially stadium shows. You know what I mean? Like I'd pay like, a, I'd give an arm and a leg to see Tom Waits. Yeah. But that's not going to be at, you know, the 45,000 person amphitheater. No, it'll be at like an opera house in front of maybe like, you know, a thousand right. people. Yeah. I knew a guy that uh, he was in. I'm going to tell his story because um, I'm so jealous of it. He stumbled into some jazz bar in, I might have been like, it was New York somewhere and was getting dinner and people start playing music. And he realizes about halfway through his meal, he looks over and it's Tom Waits playing the piano with a guy on double bass and a guy playing like classical guitar. Nice. It's like 250 person room that he was just there to get dinner. It was just like, Oh, oh that's, that's Tom Waits. Nice. So I'm living vicariously through his story. Yeah. There was a, there's a, a jazz, a great jazz saxophonist named James Carter that I was, there's a, a jazz jam down at Burt's, which is Eastern market every Friday. And I just, me and this girl went down there. And next thing I know, it's like, we're watching a free James Carter concert. Not exactly Tom Waits, but we're talking about like a world renowned legendary saxophonist that just was like dressed head to toe in like Laker, like LA Laker oh, warm up yeah. gear. Like he was just like chilling. And then he's like, all right, I, I'm just, I'm just going to blow everyone's mind and then just leave. And that, yeah. and that, and, but some of these musicians are, they're, they're in a headspace where they're just enjoy what they do so much that they they'll like just pop in and mm -hmm. fuck around because they just like it you know yeah. and there's an anonymity yeah. involved in you know just playing some small jazz club where they're just serving up beer and and wings on a friday night you know right it was right. sick that sounds amazing they just i I wish that I was a few years older because back uh, it was before he passed away. Sam Rivers, the like free jazz saxophone guy, yeah, would uh, he'd have a I think it was like every Sunday night or something like that. There was just like a giant free jazz show that he just did it every time at uh, this club downtown called the Social. It's like, yo, you could see Sam Rivers every week if you wanted to like yeah because he just like you said he just loved doing what he did so they would just go down there and play some free jazz yeah and one last anecdote on, uh, on the same tip is when i was living in san pedro california when i first got out to la because i was out there for five years you could mm -hmm. see mike watt of the minutemen you could see mike watt for five bucks at the corner bar and he and his band wouldn't even headline they would play second and then he would just get in his van and leave. Hell yeah. <laughs> so like I, I remember it was 2016 and I just I was living in my van. I was homeless in LA and I'm just like, dude, I just paid five bucks to see a Mike Watt show. And he's like, there's like 20 people at this bar. <laughs> so that so yeah, depending on where you go, that's the beauty of these certain cities because th these people that are complete rock stars. Like if, you know, Mike Watt would be a $25 ticket in Detroit, but in, in Pedro, that's his backyard. He literally just right. shows up and is like, fuck it. And plays in front yeah, of 15 play. people. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's lovely. And it goes all the way back to like what you said earlier when I'm talking about you and Psycho Stick and Dog Crash and Disco, all of these people are just, they're just people. They're he's dudes. Just, he's just some guy playing bass. I mean, he's Mike Watt, but he's really just some dude. Well, if you and if you think about it, he's Flea's all time favorite bass player. So Oh yeah. You you gotta think about think about like who this guy influenced and what that did to the world at large. And here he is at at the fucking what was the place called? It's called like the wagon wheel. Uh and it was right. like it was like on twenty third in San Pedro, California, and just like a dumpy shithole bar. And like he like here's like Double Nickels on the Dime, that Miniman album, when I was in high school, that should change my fucking life because like Man. there was no punk rock that combined the elements of funk and jazz and all that shit. And and you know now I'm thirty something years old, and here's Mike Watt. And I think they're the like the biggest argument for like, or like not argument but like example of like punk rock 
as an attitude, you know what I mean? Or an approach yeah. versus like a sound. Cause that's like some of the most punk shit you can listen to. And yeah, it's like, they've got like, uh, it's like classical Spanish style guitar oh, yeah. songs on there, funk songs on there, you know, that's, that's an incredible record. Yeah. And, and well, Mike Watt is quoted as saying punk is what we made it. And, right. and if you, there's a book called this band can be your life. And then there's also the Miniman documentary, which I have up here. You can't see it, but it's uh, the actual liner notes of the DVD are signed by Mike Watt. Um, awesome. I'm a huge Miniman fan. But but anyway, even in the DVD, um, it was the second release on SST Records, which is Greg Ginn from Black Flag's record mm-hmm. label. You know, I mean, you probably know all this. I'm, I'm not saying anything new. But the fact of the matter is, is, is that it was Nervous Breakdown by Black Flag. That was the first EP on SST Records. And then it, the, the second EP on SST Records was the fucking Minutemen. And I think it was called Paranoid Time, the Paranoid Time EP. And f- like... The attitude about punk back then wasn't like it has to sound the same. Greg Ginn would bring Minutemen on tour with Black Flag and all these hardcore kids would spit on them. These hardcore right. kids would throw shit at them. And Mike Watt and D Boone would be on stage and just be like, fuck you. And then they'd play some funky weird shit. And like, <laughs> and it's like, if that's not the most inspiring thing ever, you're being spit on. People are throwing beer bottles at you and you're just, and you're still just like, we're going to do our thing. Like right. that is, that's why that band rules so hard yeah, is because not, o- not only sonically were they just doing some off the wall shit, but they like, they stood up to fucking violence right. it, it, and, and in the face of violence still just like stayed true to who they were. And that's, right. that's like. That's the best, dude. Yeah, they they they're incredible. Uh, you said uh, this band could could be your life. That's uh, history lesson part two. That song, those lyrics. Uh, that's that song. My 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 girlfriend used to make fun of me because I would always put that song on because that's gotta be like I, I don't know. Just D Boone is genius. That band is amazing. I love uh, Firehose as well. Yeah, um, Firehose well, has got some great stuff. Yeah, and their drummer is incredible too. Really wonky, weird, you know, not a traditional like approach to playing the drums. Yeah, George Hurley, man, that that motherfucker. I don't think he had one lesson. I just think he, he played. It, he's just a phenom. He's just one of those one of those dudes that is just like, okay, well, it, it's one of those lightning in a bottle bands where, sure. and and a lot of times those lightning in a bottle bands they end tragically with you know D Boone being killed uh, on the highway right. on the 10 and uh man so when when Watt signed cuz I'm looking at it right now it's it's a photo of them on the 10 and it's just their van right and he, mm-hmm. when he signed it for me he start, he like started tearing up and he he said that on my way to Detroit, I took that same stretch of highway. Like, imagine your best friend dies on this stretch of highway, um, and you like continue to tour into your fifties, and and every time you're on that stretch of highway, you know, driving from like Phoenix to Tucson on the ten, you just like you have to like relive your best friend dying. <laughs> so right. when he, it's wild, man. When he signed it, like you could tell. It was heavy for him yeah okay. it's really heavy and yeah i can't even imagine i can't even imagine no. like because because i have really close friends that i made music with but they're not even in my band anymore because they just can't they have real jobs yada yada right. but yeah we did flip our van on the highway in 2010 and it was it was funny because mike watt told us what not to do with the gear and we didn't listen to him and we we're re- really lucky to be alive actually so, really? He said, How yeah, did that happen? If you don't mind me asking, the black ice, flipping. black ice, black ice. Yeah, which is well, you're from Florida. It's something yeah. um, up here when it'll do this shit called freezing rain, where it's like raining, but as it hits the pavement, it's freezing. It's terrifying. Right. And so this is the thing: is you'll be driving on the road, and then all of a sudden, your tires will stop gripping the road. Sure. And that's what happened to us. And we were driving straight. The next thing I know, we were driving sideways. And then next thing I know, we were driving backwards. And then next thing I know, we were driving forwards into the ditch, hit the ditch, flipped the van, 
It's just, there's nothing you can do. What I mean, what are you supposed to do? Because I, I imagine that ice can go on for an indefinite amount of time. Correct. You know what I mean, it can all be frozen. It, the whole highway could be frozen. So what are you, yeah. what are you supposed to do? Because, because, oh man, there's not much you can do. You just got, you got, you got to just fucking pray. Try not, <laughs> yeah, try not to, to, to crash. Or if you do try to do it gracefully, I guess. Yeah, I mean, luckily we were only going fifty miles an hour. This um, so my computer's overheating right now, dude. Sure, sure. <laughs> I think we gotta end it. That's I could, fine. Uh, hey, man, let's do it. Let's do another part. Let's this this is fun. Let's talk soon. I could talk to you for a long time, but okay. So uh, yeah, July first, Flagman, nice guy. The new single, more singles on yeah. the way. Video on the way. F- uh, Flag boys turn into Flagman, like Voltron yes. or like Power Flag Rangers. Boys for life. Yeah, so I yeah, we could talk longer, but also like I'm trying to make these podcasts. Yeah, so so long story short, Minutemen rule, all these bands rule. Ooh. It says encoding overloaded. Consider turning down video settings. <laughs> it, it it's oh no, it's because it's fucking ninety degrees right now. My computer is running hot. That that, that makes sense. Yeah, Sam from Flagman, I appreciate yes. you. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me. All right. When I put this out, I will send you links. And uh, is there is there any other thing you want to plug before I hit the button? Uh, no. Listen to Flagman. Listen to Downtown Brown. Be weird. <laughs> rock out. Um, yeah, that's it. Cool, Flag man. Boys for life. Flag Boys for life. All right, man. I'm, I, I'm looking forward to the single tomorrow. I'm going to rock that shit. Hell yeah, dude. All right. Thanks, thanks Sam. Uh, I'll talk to you yeah, soon. Let's talk soon. All right, brother. brother. Later, dude. Hey, do you like this video? Do you want to see more stuff like it? Well, consider being a patron of my Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Neil P. Neil P. If you pledge monthly, you get some perks, you get some exclusive content, and you get to help stuff like this get made on the monthly. Yo, check it out. <laughs>